Hello, Mother Nature. What are you up to? Just admiring one of my favorite amphibians. I can see through its skin. That's why they call it the glass frog. Translucent skin helps the frog blend into its surroundings. Wait, I can see through the eggs too. That helps the tadpoles stay hidden from predators during this vulnerable life stage. But what if a predator spots them? They're completely unprotected. What? A swarm of wasps? Mother Nature, do something! Wait for it. Wait for it. The father frog protects the eggs. He's a ninja! That's freaky! Hello, Mother Nature. What are you up to? Getting ready for the show in South America. Wait a minute. Are those penguins? In the desert? Yes. Humboldt penguins. I thought penguins needed to be near water to find fish for their families. They do. It's just in this case, it's a long commute to get there. Whoa, that looks like a hundred foot drop. It is. And penguins can't fly. There is only one way down. Rondo! <clears throat> Claws on their webbed feet help with climbing, and bellies are good for sliding. Who are their neighbors down there? Sea lions. They eat penguins in the water, but are slower on land, especially when sleeping in the sun. Excuse me, Han and me coming through. <laughs> fun, 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 excuse me. Excuse me, fun me coming through. Excuse, excuse me. What a journey. And they still need to climb back up to their nests. How often do they do that? Every day when there are hungry mouths to feed. That's freaky. What a beautiful place, Mother Nature. Thanks. I'm proud of the colors and creatures here. Do you have a favorite? I love everything under the sea equally, but there is one that's truly unique. The peacock mantis shrimp. What is that? It's a brightly colored crustacean with folded claws, beautiful and deadly. Ooh, I better keep an eye on this one. Actually, these bright beauties can keep an eye on you and watch for their next victim. They can see in two directions at once. Whoa. It also holds a world record, fastest puncher. It has fists? Kind of. It has spring-loaded claws, also known as hammer claws. That sounds like it would hurt. It does. When they're not breaking through shells, they are fighting off anyone who enters their home turf. That is one dangerous, beautiful creature. That's freaky. What a beautiful place, Mother Nature. Thank you. Alaska is a great place to watch a bear picnic. I thought bears kept to themselves. They do, unless there's a large food source luring them to the same spot. And a dead humpback whale washing up on shore has quite the odor. Wow, a whale. Doesn't get much bigger than that. These bears are getting ready to hibernate, 
so they need to eat as many calories as possible before their long winter nap. A whale must have over a million calories. It does. It's a buffet of blubber. But competition for it is still fierce. What an appetite. They eat up to 90 pounds of food a day to get enough energy to survive the next few months. I could never eat that much. I'd have to lie down. The bears do just that. Then after resting and digesting, they go back for more. That's freaky. Hello, Mother Nature. What are you up to? Just waiting for the show to start. What show? A competition among the male sage grouse. Here come the competitors. Are they singers or dancers? A bit of both. They create sounds with their bodies. Ew! Not those kind of noises. Pops and whistles that come from large air sacs over their chest. Sure is shaking those fanned out tail feathers. Do only the guys compete? They're trying to attract a mate. The female picks the winner. Oh, I almost didn't see her over there. She's camouflaged, so predators won't see her when she's guarding the eggs. So the males use their coloring to get attention, and the females use theirs to avoid it. Pretty cool, Mother Nature. Thanks. I do what I can. That's freaky! Mother Nature, who are you hanging out with today? I'm waiting for the gang to arrive. Or more specifically, to bloom. Flowers? Under the sea? Wait, that flower is moving. It's not a flower, it's a jellyfish. What? More specifically, a baby sea nettle jellyfish. The young sea nettle is the size of a grain of rice and can live at the bottom of the sea for years. And when light, temperature, and other environmental conditions are right, they begin to swim freely. Cool, how big do they get? In just a few months, they are up to 16 feet long. They sure do grow up fast. That's freaky. Hello, Mother Nature. What are you up to? Watching a queen at work. A termite queen, to be exact. After mating, the queen can be up to 100 times bigger than the other termites. She is so full of eggs that she can hardly move and will never leave the nest. The workers take the eggs from her body as she lays them. Where are the eggs taken? They're taken to a nursery in the tunnels and are cared for by the workers. Do the workers have time to do anything other than caring for the queen and her eggs? They aren't called workers for nothing. Members of this highly organized super colony also collect food, build tunnels, and act as soldiers. It's all to continue the survival of the more than 150 million termite eggs that this queen can produce in her 15-year lifespan. That's freaky!
What a beautiful place, Mother Nature. Thank you. I'm watching a story unfold. There's a flower that only opens for six days to disperse its pollen and seeds. How do the animals know it's blooming? It emits an extremely strong musty odor, like the stink of a skunk. The smell attracts a night creature. A bat? Yep, the tube-lipped nectar bat. A pool of nectar is at the bottom of the flower, and there's only one way to get to it. Is that its tongue? It is. This bat has the longest tongue compared to its body of any mammal in the world. If the bat were a person, its tongue would be almost nine feet long. While dipping its long tongue into the high energy nectar, the bat picks up pollen on its head and delivers it to the next flower it visits. This spreads the pollen to create seeds and help new flowers grow. So they each get something they need. Yes, this bat is the only creature that pollinates this flower. It's like they're made for each other. That's freaky. Mother Nature, who are you hanging out with today? The hairy frogfish. What a fun name. Is it part frog? No, it's a fish with a few extra adaptations. Okay. Does it have hair? Nope. Instead of hair, it's covered in thousands of fleshy spines called spinules that help it blend into its surroundings. Does it swim like a fish? Not really. The angled fins are best suited to walk and to anchor the frogfish to the seafloor. Does it eat worms? Well... What? It has its own worm? In a way. It has an adapted dorsal fin that acts as a fishing rod with a lure. Wow, a fish that goes fishing. It doesn't just attract and catch small fish. This furry fisherman stalks and swallows big fish too. Looks like rocks aren't as tasty as flounder. That's freaky! Hello, Mother Nature. What are you up to? Checking on the Bentarong. What's a biratong? The bentarong, also known as a bear cat, even though it's not a bear or a cat. I can see how it looks like both. It's an arboreal animal, which means it spends most of its time living in trees. It uses its tail for balance to hold onto branches. Like a monkey. And it can turn its ankles 180 degrees. That way the claws can grip the tree as it climbs down head first. How does it communicate? That's the best part. There are scent glands on the base of its tail that it uses to mark its territory or attract a mate. Why is that the best part? Because it smells like buttered popcorn. That's freaky!